Hey folks, it's uh, October, no, November 5th, 2019, and uh, this is the Surly Grognards, and I reversed oh, my intro shit. completely. completely. It, it is, in fact, November 5th. Remember, we remember, Alan Moore November. Reference. Yeah, we should make an Alan Moore reference. Um, Remember the green, protect the green. You thought I was going to make a, a V for Dead reference, but no, I made a Swamp Thing reference. Because I'm not nearly as clever as I think I am sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gav in the chat's like, indeed, the fireworks are non-fucking stop. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, our, this is our Guy Fox Day special, where we're not going to talk anything about, talk about Guy Fox at all. <laughs> Because we really don't know. What, we're from the U.S. Not really our thing. Some guy wears a mask, and some internet trolls do stuff. That's that's my understanding. My my, my only compl my only regret is that when I started the stream up, I usually play a song, and I should I, I should have played London Calling instead. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been appropriate. <laughs> or maybe God Save the Queen. London Calling's a better song, but. God Saving the Queen might have been more appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more sarcastic, and that's saying something given London Calling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anarchy in the UK? <laughs> Ooh, that would have been good. Again, don't like the... Again, it's... Yeah, yeah, we should, we were subject to hand! <laughs> we, we were talking about... We were talking about, we were talking about the clash when we started, before, before we started, started recording, it. and... <laughs> We're gonna get we we will get into a we will get into a punk rip, a punk rock rabbit hole if we keep talking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, today we're gonna be doing a bit of a campaign brainstorming, a bit differently than usual, um, and I'll explain in a bit. Uh, but before we do, we should talk a little bit about like what's what we've been up to. Because we 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 you know is there anything anything of note you've been up to gaming wise, Eric? Is the question. Uh, not or, particularly. Um, yeah. been replaying BattleTech. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I've done fuck all interesting, uh, gaming wise. Um, yeah. Finally beat the fucking Goo Grove in Gloomhaven. We were for a while we were stuck in this one mission in the, for my uh nightly my weekly Gloomhaven mm -hmm. uh group, and we we finally beat it last uh last night, the night before last night, Sunday night. Nice. So, fucking glue. Uh, we we started calling it the Goo Grove because it's a it was an orchard overtaken by slimes. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, nothing much for me gaming wise either. Uh, nerdery wise, I've been rereading Astro City. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I've been reading um, the Human Division by John Scalazzi. Ooh, which, nice. Uh, yeah, which is a part of the the No Man's War series. Yeah, for you who don't know. Good um, shit. First time reading it. Uh, I am enjoying it. Uh, I, I like that sort of this weird like series of different vignettes mm -hmm. that tie together to a greater plot. So, Scalzi's a good writer. Sc Scalzi knows his shit. Yeah. I wish it was a bit more descript descriptive on what the aliens look like because I end up just sort of like injecting like weird monstrosities here and there and I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to be like be tentacled spider creatures or like seven limbed cats with like Banana, uh, uh, banana eye stalks. So you know, <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I I just been reading Astro City and Marvel. Continuing to marvel at Busek's writing and the god the art team, he, the, the artist he's got for that 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 thing. They just they work oh, yeah, so well no. together. No, uh, Astro City is like really fucking good. Um, I keep. Meaning to, uh, I can't lend it to you now. You're, uh, <laughs> you're not around. Um, but I, I kept on meaning to lend to you uh, Lock and Key and Saga. Uh, um, I'm going to recommend those to you again. Yeah, I, I, they're they're on my list at some point. No, I just been I I've, I've been reread I reread Confession. I'm rereading Tarnished Angel right now, and I just finished mm. the, the 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 issue of Confession, which is all about the Mock Turtle. And literally. Oh, wow. The, the next page, you know, the first page of the next issue is literally, you know, the chalk outline of the, the mock, tur of mock Turtle. It's like... Oh, right, right. That one. Yeah. Oh, my God. Busek just does... Has this... Busek and his art team for that, his artists for that, they have this amazing ability to just go from... 
Because just saying Busick is, you know, as the creator for that is just wrong. It's true. It's wrong for comic books because the 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 artists are also such a huge part of the storytelling in comic books. Oh, absolutely. Which like, is why um, that, which that was is why part of the big uh, yeah that was part of the big artist revolution that started um, uh, Image was that they wanted equal credit and um, well and thought they could also write. Turns out most of them couldn't. <laughs> but yeah. Um... Just the, the 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 visual between the both the visual storytelling and Busek's writing is just his mm. ability to go from you know you just sort of you know good you know hum, very human storytelling in a you know superhero setting to something that's actually funny to just heartbreaking. Yep. Just oh my god, he's so they're they're so good, so good. That's just oh. Uh. Anyways, oh, the other thing I've been doing, I st- I'm, which I wanted to share just to get it off, get it out there. Uh, I stumbled across this guy on YouTube, uh, Chef PK. He's a, an actual chef, and he does react. He basically did, created his little channel for fun on the side to do reactions to, uh, food and anime, and maybe to do recreations of them. And he started off doing so Shokugeki no Soma, Food Wars. Yeah, he's reacting to the entire series now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, the important question here, are, are there fucking foodgasms involved? Because that is that is the correct answer. Not, not, so, the really interesting thing is, like, you know, he's... he The level of just, like, sheer excitement he has over, like, what they're talking about in the show, and not just, like, the, the like actual technical aspects of the cooking... But like you know, the messaging behind it about and how it applies to actually being a, a chef in a restaurateur is apparently completely fucking spot on. <laughs> huh? And like you know how much I you know I'm not a big fan of the central arc. Right. Right. Yeah, I've got a better, more of appreciation for now hearing from listening to a chef talk about it. By the way, Eric, okay. if you thought you hated a zombie, I, I, I'm guessing he hates him even more. Oh my god. <laughs> From, like, the second Asami opened his mouth, <laughs> he's like, oh, I hate this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's... He's wrong. Wrong! <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Recommend checking it out. It's fun. At any rate, to the, th- the actual topic at hand today, though. So, uh, I, as you've all heard, I have been working on a D&D setting to, so that I can actually run a new D&D game. Because I like running... I, when I'm doing D&D, I, pref- I actually really prefer running in my own settings. Um, it, mostly because I I, I, th- I think a large part of it is, A, a I like creating settings. I, I actually enjoy the process. Mm-hmm. But also, I, I, it always feels like I feel more connected to the, to the setting and being able to tell... I'm able to tell better stories when I... It's something I've... The, the world is one I've created as opposed to working from someone else's world. I'm not as good at doing that as I... I at least I feel like that. Um, I have to really know... Like, I have to really, really know the setting, like, uh, if I'm running someone else's set, some, a setting written by someone else. Like, mm. that's the reason I can, I can run Star Wars, is I... Like, Star Wars is sort of part of my fictional DNA. <laughs> Right, yeah. It, it, it's I, know, sort of... I, it, I grew up with Star Wars, l- literally. Yeah, it, it's cultural osmosis, if nothing else. Yeah. But, you know, I like literally, I I saw the original Star Wars when it first came out in the theaters in 1977. I was four. <laughs> I saw the first, I saw the, the, I saw, you know, you know, I saw the, each of the original trilogy on release in Boston, you know, not like, not like, you know, opening night, but. Right, but you know, like within like the first week or two of it coming out, we you know my parents would take took my parents took me to the uh, Charles Theater, Charles River Theater. Uh, the, I thought I think we saw Star Wars at Fresh Pond. I'm not positive on that. I think no, Fresh Pond is still still around. It I'm is, not sure but about it's, the it's, other it's one. Not, it's no, the Charles is gone. Yeah, that Charles was great. It had a really good speaker system for the era. era. So you know, we you know we saw we saw Star Wars at Charles the first time. It's like just the sound of the Star Destroyer going overhead something just resonates in my bones. Yeah, no shit. 
And it's like, hi, this is uh, this is your childhood. Here yeah. you go. <laughs> so, you know, the original trilogy has a special place in my heart, even if I'm a little... Even, even as burned out on Star Wars as I am currently. Yeah, like... <sighs> briefly on Star Wars, I'm kind of just sort of... Thank you, Internet. You've made me hate Star Wars. Yeah, kind of. Like, I can't engage on it except on the most passive levels at this point. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to... I, I don't really want to watch it, but I will if, it, if I stumble across it because it's Star Wars. Yeah, but, I, yeah I, I will just... watch episode nine when it comes out, and then I'm done for a while. <laughs> I'll probably end up watching episode nine with my uh, with my brothers over Christmas because it's become a bit of a tradition. That's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. But at any rate, um, so I've been working on a setting, and it's been going very slowly because I've been, you know. <sighs> Right, but the combination of writer's block and game mastering burnout, because you know I've mm. been, I've been game mastering the tabletop RPGs on and off for over thirty years now. <laughs> you know, I started in the early '80s and at like age nine and ten, and <laughs> now here I am in 2019. You know, in my mid 40s. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and I, uh, I understand burnout. Trust me. Yeah, I, no, I get it, it. happens to all creatives at some point, pretty much. But I have done some work on it, uh, and Eric at one point suggested that at some point we might want to consider doing, like, we could consider brainstorming some stuff on it. See if we could get, if we could get more, if I could get more stuff on it, uh, get it out there. Uh, so I can do more work, and we th- might be able to do it as a as a show. And that's actually something I, I've been I've thought you know that's something we could do at some point. If I, especially if I'm like you know, I'm feeling a little creative, but I want to I want to have someone to bounce stuff off of and maybe give me mm. suggestions. So that is where we are. What we are doing today. So we're going to start off by going over a little bit about what I already have. So this is honestly for longtime viewers is a bit of a. I'm peeling sort of the curtain back a bit here, and you guys get to see some of my creative process. Uh, <laughs> I totally did not bring this up and to review it, and am actually prepared because that would be that be the breaking of the seventh seal. <laughs> oh yeah, I I've been sharing the the, the my work in progress uh, document with the 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 people that I usually game with for a while now, so. So they've seen bits and pieces of it as it's been going, and you guys get to see it now also uh, if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening to just if you're listening to just audio, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I've got a Google Doc open for it. Um, it's not particularly well ordered right now, um, but that's mostly because it's it's I've been writing stuff as it's come to mind basically. It's better ordered than anything I would have put together which would basically look like you know that picture of Charlie Day in front of the conspiracy board with all the spare, the spare <laughs> hanging around that's pretty much my, my creative process <laughs> yeah I could see that so I basically I'm going to go through sort of the, the order in which I actually wrote stuff for you guys so you guys can see it um so basically, the, the 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 idea that sparked the set, part my idea for the setting. Honestly, there are two things, two ideas. Uh, one of which is not in the doc yet, but I talked a little bit on stream. Um, which was basically, I loved the idea of sort of a tavern outside of the world, where the party could interact with each other and go to different, use it as a way to get to different parts of the world if need be, uh, and maybe have like meet their patron there, maybe meet, maybe have a chance to meet like a patron there or what have you. So, you know, it's a sort of, you know, you meet in an inn, except different. <laughs> um, and I totally not steal the idea for that, for, for that, for that tavern from a uh, restaurant, the animated restaurant to another world. Nope, not at all. <laughs> um, but the next thing that I, but that wasn't going, didn't really much go much of anywhere. because like, I don't want to run directly in that setting because it's not my thing. And I'm, and, 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 and you know, it's, right. and then I had the idea, which you're, which you're sort of looking at on screen here. For uh, a for the, for for a pantheon of gods, which is not normally where I start with things in an RPG setting. Yeah, uh, th- th- honestly, when you you threw this out there, I was like, 
This is unusual starting with the gods. Usually you just sort of like improvise gods as they're needed and yeah. You know, often I will just basically use like like in several settings I've just used like, oh, okay, here's the basic D and D pantheon chunk. Yeah. Like when I'm doing D and D I'll often do that. I'm like, yep, okay, yeah, Paylor you know Paylor or Gramesh. Gramesh. Maguli, yep. I don't think there are any other gods that matter. <laughs> Arathis. Uh, Tiamat. Um, Tiamat, Tiamat's bitch brother. Mubamut. His bitch brother. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I had the idea for a sort of basically having, like, a bunch of sort of opposed deities who were t nominally opposed but also, like, you know, they were, you know, it wasn't just, they, there's, basically, I started with, basically, like, instead of having, basically, I was starting off with what was sort of similar to an alignment wheel, like the classic alignment wheel of, you know, good, e good evil, ca order, chaos. But I decided to do it a little bit differently. Um, mostly because I wanted to avoid, with the deities, in putting implicitly, you know, good and evil on this. Because I, w I wanted it, good and evil to be more of a <clears throat> a choice for the players, and for the the people living in the world, uh, and their own sort of interpretations of what the gods are. Um. And so I basically started off with a you know a four way axis, and I added a fifth axis. Uh, I, I basically added a third dimension, effectively. So it's sort of, X, sort of an XY axis, which was, you know, light versus darkness, order versus chaos. And then on the Z axis, effectively, was nature and death. Basically life and death, but I decided nature, I mm. wanted nature instead. Sort of, you know, and uh, being sort of technically another axis, but not really. Uh, and I'll explain in a minute. So, you know, order is opposed by chaos, light is opposed by darkness. And then I decided that there were, you know... Intersection points between order and light, light and chaos, chaos and darkness, and darkness and order. And, you know, they would be opposed, the ones in the diagonal would be opposed to each other and be, quote, aligned with the ones they were adjacent to. Um, so, you know, the intersection of light and chaos was fire, which made a certain amount of sense, I thought. That was, so the, that was the first one I filled in, which meant that water had to be its opposite, and... Be water being the intersection of order and chaos makes a lot of sense from certain philosophical standpoints. Sure. You could also order, order you know, water being chaotic if you want to. Uh, very easily. Um, order and light being earth, and then darkness and chaos being air. You know, basically air being probably being closer to chaos and earth being closer to dark order makes more sense, I think. Mm. Is, is more important, but, you know, argue, you could arguably say earth should be over where water is, really, but Earth's not the opposite of fire. Right. And so it's, it's not so much that water is the, is, you know, is the sort of halfway point between order and dark. It's not the sort of combination of order and darkness. It's just, a, it's sort of aligned with them. And it's opposed to fire. So the next thing is, how does nature and death align with that? And the thought I had was that, uh, they actually are opposed, they're nominally speaking opposed to each other, but are effectively aligned, sort of aligned with everything else. Because they're not really part of that sort of, ex they're not part of the same cycle, effectively. Mm. Which is what led, led into something else that came up later. <laughs> so, you know, you have, so that's sort of where I, that's where I started, and basically I started, you know, filling it, I figured you know, those are sort of the elemental forces of the, of the world. And then, you know, I had to, I felt basically started filling in deities for each one of these aspects. And these deities would have other aspects also. Um, and so that meant there were ten deities. Um, uh, and the thought I ended up having was I sort of started to, to go for something a little sort of vaguely Greek, Greek mythology-ish. In that this group of deities overthrew the old gods. Mm. Um, and then I had the idea that Nature and death were part of the old pantheon who switched sides. 
Uh, and effectively, what I decided was that nature and death basically didn't give a fuck about this war between the gods. They, they had it was it had nothing to do with them. It was irrelevant. But the the new the new the new generation of of gods basically convinced them to side with them, because the war, if it kept going at the sort of stalemate that it was, would end up destroying everything. And neither death death and nature didn't want that because death is about not just about you know death is about a, the cycle. Right. And so, if everything's destroyed, the cycle ends, and that's stupid. <laughs> that's wrong. The cycle has to continue. They're both about the cycle. <laughs> so, uh, they ended up aligning with the, the, the eight new gods, and led to the victory over the uh, over the old gods, who the, right. are largely forgotten. Like, modern car- player, like, modern you know, mortals are where there's an there wasn't like there are scraps and stories of that there was an old pantheon, but almost nothing is known about them, because the new new pantheons basically get yeah, no they no longer exist they are irrelevant we're in charge. It is Fuck our those time. guys with their stuff, and it's possible there was a there were pantheons before them and before them that. That might be possible. Who knows? Um, Warlocks, get out your great old one packs. <laughs> no, no, that would never happen. <laughs> uh, the next thing I also decided that, that I wanted to have sort of like legendary beasts that were tied to each of the uh, each of the sort of elemental for the the the, uh, the primal forces, which I call the primal beasts. Several of them will probably be like big, powerful ancient dragons, but some of them might be different things, and I haven't decided on that yet. So hmm. there's a primal beast so basically aligned with each one of the primal forces. So there's a primal beast of fire, which is probably a giant fuck off dragon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Giant fuck off red dragon. He likes to set things on fire. So you know, there there are probably things there are probably things tied to each of them. Like like the primal beast of earth. Like if you look at classic D and D, would probably be the Tarask. Yeah. Yeah. Although or something similar. Yeah, uh, that or it could be that could be you know things like that. But you know, we're talking yeah. stuff like that. These are monsters that the players are not supposed to fight, and they're not really there. But they are things that like again, like warlocks could swear allegiance to. These are powerful ent- entities that are not. They're not the gods, and they're not mortals. They are something else. They're they're they are you know. Prime, they are primal. Fo- they are they are sort of living embodiments of pr- the primal forces, basically. Um, but not a lot's known about them because you know, uh, these are things that like when they wake and walk, bad shit can happen, or maybe not. Sometimes depends, you know. Um. So yeah, each of the deities have you know at least one other domain in their portfolio in addition to the, the primal force they're aligned with. Um, but yeah, there was big war. It basically wrecked the world, and I, I will show you guys the map I have in a moment. Um, and then I went through. I've named all the deities. I haven't written blurbs for all of them yet. I've written a blurb for for two of them, basically three of them, technically. Right. Uh, I've written the blurb for the uh, for the deity of light, the nameless king. So basically, what I did is I created. I had a little section here that you know, name titles and their dom- the domains I wanted to associate with them. And so, you know, his, the, his name is The Nameless King. His name's a secret. That's, so secrets are one of his domains. And his titles are The Bringer of Light, The Victorious Sun, The Lord of the Dawn. His domains are Light, Sun, War, and Secrets. And I decided that for, for a D&D, for a, unlike most D&D settings, I didn't want to have the Sun God be definitively one of the good gods. So he's the patron yeah, of the... Yeah, I mean, t- I'm not getting any kind of vibes from this Nameless King at all. I mean... Yeah, they, he seems like a stand-up folk. We're not seeing any references to classic literature by some guy named Milton. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a patron of the, tief- of the tiefling race. Uh, he is the favorite deity of the Cardinal Empire, which is like the major tiefling kingdom, uh, in, t- sort of nation, I should say. Um, most demons re- revere him as the first of their kind. Whether he actually is or not, no one's sure. His like the only people who might know who what the the nameless king's actual name is 
are his the higher ranks of his clergy, and they're not talking. Because, uh, you know, the whole, like, domain of secrets kind of deal. Yes. <laughs> and it's... It, people assume that demons, like, that, like, a lot of demons know, but they're not telling. Um... The the opposed his his opposite is Stygis, the prince of the you know the prince of shadows the dark prince the prince of mischief, totally not his younger brother. Nope. Uh, his domains are dark, moon, trickery, and secrets. Um, I'm leaning towards him basically being sort of like, in many ways, one of the favored deities of a lot of halflings and gnome like and gnomes probably. I like the idea of his domain being secrets, but specifically uh, the act of revealing secrets. Because he's the the opposite of the, he is the diametrically opposed to the nameless king, who's about keeping secrets. And I like the idea of darkness being about revealing secrets and light being about keeping them. Because it's the opposite. It's the opposite of what you might expect. Sure. Uh, the other ones I wrote a little blurb about are Ignia and Oceana, uh, the deities of of uh, water and fire. Uh, they are twins. Uh, they are known as the sisters of civilization. Uh, they're they are driven as much by their desire to foster civilizations as by their intense, almost combustible rivalries. Um, the pair are often the favorite deities of most civilized humans. Like most civil, most humans revere both of them, which you know probably both delights and pisses them off. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm cooler. No, I'm cooler. And their worship is extremely common in lands where humans are influential. Uh, so, you know, their titles, like, Ignea is, you know, the Hearth Mother, the Unquenchable Fire, the Lady of Flame. And her domains are fire, civilization, and family. And Oceana is the Harbor Queen, the Golden Goddess, the Limitless Deep. And her domains are water, civilization, and commerce. Which makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because trade's going to happen along the, ro- the waterways. Yes. Um, and from there, I've not written blurbs for anybody else yet, and I I will at some point. But uh, the other ones I've got that we got sort of the names for, you know, the Earth Goddess is Terra because you know it's right. obvious. Uh, she's the Mother of Earth, the Queen of Fangs, the Lady in Green. Domains are Nature, Life, and Birth. I remember you mentioning you really liked the Queen of Fangs title there. Yeah, yeah, it, it sort of gives me the, this um makes me think of like the. Not just like the the god of like um the, the goddess of like nature is like wildflowers and and no she's the goddess pretty... of all nature yeah so it like you've got like the whole like aspect of like predation and hunting in there too yes absolutely and that's really cool like the feral feral dogs and cute kittens are both things that she yes <laughs> over <laughs> right and uh, the the Lord of Death, Mortis, is his titles are Death Shepherd, the Guide of the Final Journey, and the Silent One. Uh, the only domains, I, only domain I given him beyond death was travel. So far, I might give him something else. I haven't decided yet. But uh, I decided that the Death Deity being the travel god, I thought would be kind of neat and yeah, making no, I a like lot of damn one. sense. Because, you know, death being the final journey, as it were. Although it's not really the final journey, it's the journey to the next the next cycle. <laughs> right. <laughs> because again, I like the idea of cycles being a thing. Um uh, kinda Gav, uh she's but then remember one of her, one of one of uh, Oceana's domains is definitively civilization. <laughs> and I, I like the idea of, you know, the two of them being both creators, but being of civilization, but being they're not opposites, they're antagonists is the thing. Yeah. Again, it's it's, you know, the rivalry between twin sisters. <laughs> so there are times that they that they, they are at each other's throats, but there are situations where you push the wrong thing, they are back to back and you are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> um No one makes fun of my family but me. <laughs> kinda. Uh, Chaos is Entros, because, you know... Right. Uh, he's the unspeakable one, the lord of pandemonium, the keeper of the forbidden. His domains are chaos and magic. Uh, Integra is the grand judge, the high librarian, and the unchanging one. Domains are order and knowledge. 
Um, one for for uh, Entropy Boy, whose name I've already forgotten, despite the fact it's very similar to Entropy. Entros. Um, <laughs> is uh, you might also want to um, put like uh, I kind of want to say like perception, but that's not right. Like puzzles and uh, I don't know. Maybe. Something about like um. Altered, I I don't know, because <laughs> it's chaos. But uh, like, all there is, like, because chaos has um, because all things are possible in chaos. You eventually end up with a pattern, hence fractals. So like, something about like dis- divining secrets through the madness, kind of thing. Like, yeah, I don't think it's not so much a domain uh, as just part of his flavor. I think. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, and the last two we have are Kishara, who's the great builder and the mother of inventions, uh, Earth and creation. Uh, and Tempestos, the lord of storms, the unrelenting wind, and the bringer of floods, air and destruction. Mm. I like the idea of the air god being sort of the god, the god of destruction also. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, like, he, he's the storm bringer. Yep. Storms are destruction. <laughs> yep. So that's you know that's where I've gotten with the deities so far. I need to I need to basically come up with little blurbs for the for most of them like like I've got for the Nameless King and for Ignia and Oceana. Mm. Um. Then I wrote up little blurbs, little things for each of the PC races in the Player's Handbook. There are more, and I'm probably going to allow races outside of the Player's Handbook, uh, because you know, I just wanted to have something written up for everything in the Player's Handbook, which is what I have had at hand because I right. So you know, like. Uh, let's see. So dwarves, you know, I well, you know, basically I've got a section on dwarves. Basically, I've got the, all the races have their own little sort of my own sort of spins on what they're named. Like so, you know, you got the stoneborn and surfaceborn dwarves, which you just use the 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 packages from the player's handbook. So the stoneborn right. ones are the ones who stoneborn dwarves are the ones who are you know who are born who are born under underground basically. So it's you know, were you born in the mountains or are you born on the surface? Um, and so. Stoneborn used mountain dwarf, the mountain dwarf package, and Surfborn used the, the hill dwarf package because that makes sense. The Surfborn are the ones who tend who tend to interact more with the other 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 species out there, but it's not like it's not quite it's not it's not like it is in Dragon Age where you know the, if you're a dwarf on the surface you are no you're not really a dwarf anymore. It's different. Um. So yeah, the, the the most common counter group are the surface one dwarves. They make up the bulk of the dwarven merchants and diplomats. The stone one dwarves rarely leave the mountains uh, outside of times of war, and thus are rarely seen by non dwarves who do not venture into the underground cities where they reside. So if you go to the dwarf to to, to to there, the dwarves the, the stone board are like, oh cool, hi, welcome to welcome to our, welcome to our, our underground cities. Do you do you want to do you want to buy stuff or have have us craft stuff or what or things you know? Right. Hello, we are dwarves. Hi, what what are you doing here? Um, would, would you like a thing? <laughs> no one comes here unless they want something. What, what's the thing you want? <laughs> no, we came to study. We went to, to admire your underground architecture. Oh, cool. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like there's stuff over there. There's there. Don't go so there. That's what you want. Okay, yeah, cool. Don't, don't walk right. over there. there. Yeah. Why don't walk over there? Well, if you walk too far that way, you'll fall into lava. Well, we're not build, done building that yet, so you know you, you'll die. <laughs> Uh, uh, elves, you know, there are two groups of elves known to the races. They're the woodland dwarven Sylvani, you know, your classic wood elves. They are vastly more common than the other group. Um, they generally get along with other communities that reside near their woods, although those who endanger or attempt to exploit the Sylvani woods often find out how unwise this is. Uh, <laughs> the longer <laughs> live, live seed, um, cheat because, you know, I decided, you know, I, I like the term and, you know, Sometimes called high elves by some, though not by the Sylvani. The Sylvani, they're not high elves. That's stupid. They're not high elves. Our extremely uncommon sight to most non-elves is not known if their numbers are few or if they're just extremely reclusive. To some, seeing a seed is an omen of ill fortune, a sign that trouble will, trouble will soon arrive. Though there are legends of adventurous seed, just mustering other like-minded folk to join forces to deal with, trouble, deal with troubling events. So basically, seed, use the high elf package. Sylvani, use the wood elf package, because, duh. And again, you know, I the sheet the, the whole thing with the sheet is just because I like the idea of 
bringing a bit of that fey fairy element into the elves. Mm. And I don't want them to be like, you know, oh, they're evil. It's more a case of, oh, uh, that means something bad's going to happen, it doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a sheet there. That 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 that's a bad sign usually. It's not usually not the their doom, doom of the doom elves. <laughs> kind of. It's like it may not be their fault, but trouble follows them. Or could it be that we follow trouble? Doesn't matter. <laughs> bad for us either way. No, what showing up means that is it a sign to you that something bad is happening and you need to do something about it. You're cursed. God damn it. <laughs> They're totally cursed. I believe that. It's possible. It, they might not also might not be. I haven't decided yet whether there's a whether there's a sheet of cold in the Fano or not yet. Because there totally could be. <laughs> Fucking Fanor. <laughs> uh, halflings, <laughs> you know, they're, they're halflings. They're rural and urban ones. So rural use the stout one, stout halflings. Urban use the Lightfoot package. Uh, you know, you can find both types in both types of communities. It's just that you know the rural, rural halflings tend to be a bit more physically robust than the Lightfoots. Um. The, than the rural, than the urban ones, uh, as a general rule, halflings are, are gregarious and are fond of good food, good drink, and clever games. Games that involve wordplay, riddles, and other harmless forms of trickery are popular among halflings. Pretty much any game that allows one to see who's more clever than one of the competitors, largely because halflings, being the smallest of the of the of the you know the the mortal race of the you know more of the you know quote civilized end quote races, yeah, they they tend to trade on you know being more clever than the than the big folk for the most part. Uh, Fair enough. Humans. Uh, they're humans. They're humans. They can be found basically anywhere doing basically anything. The largest nation of, nation of humans is the Caliphate, which is on the eastern continent. Uh, there are a number of smaller human nations here. Uh, basically, if you want to play a human, use either the basic human or the variant human traits from the player's handbook, though uh, from everything I understand, you should use the very variant human because the basic human is basically a trap. So... Here's the funny thing, like, uh, when we're making D&D characters for the, um, Monday game, um, I remember, like, uh, both, uh, Matt and Hannah wanted to play humans, and I was like, so you guys will probably want to look at the feats, right? Are you kidding? We're getting plus one to all our stats. Uh, are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's how you want to do it. <laughs> I don't think they understand how how powerful feats are in fifth edition. Fifth ed I think are... there was also a certain degree of just not get, wanting to like just get want to get going and playing. There. Yeah, no, I get that too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, there are the Draconians who are dragonborn. Uh, they predominantly live in the Western Continent. There's a big, there's the Dracosian Empire. Um. Those who live outside of Dr the Dracosian Empire and particularly the ones that are off the, are not on the Western Continent tend to favor living in predominantly human cities. They have only best of humans and halflings, although they have a pretty good relationship with they have surprisingly good relations with the nomadic orc tribes in their area, uh, specifically the Dracosian Empire. They're like, oh, orcs, hi, and the nomadic orcs are like, hey, not. what's up? We're gonna go raid this village. I'll just make sure you let them know first, okay? <laughs> so you yeah, are. As long as you don't are not particularly bad and don't harm don't hurt our people, you we, we won't have to smite you. <laughs> so don't raid Dragonborn villages. No, gotcha. So if we don't hit a Dragonborn village, then the 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 armies of the Grossian Empire won't come in and hit us. I say, yeah, we're nomads, we're orcs, and we're awesome, but an entire army's bad. <laughs> we're one tribe. <laughs> <laughs> um. Gnomes are among the most least commonly seen mortal races, races only the sea elves being least seen less often. They don't tend to form their own nations, cities, or villages, rather they tend to form their own small communities within them. Forest gnomes can usually be found living amongst rural halflings, sylvan elf, and human communities. Rock gnomes tend to favor living alongside dwarves, but their communities can be found in any, nearly any major city. And that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, half-elves. They, they do half-elf things. They show up where you would expect yeah. either elves or halflings to be, or elves or humans to be. Although there are half elves who don't feel fully at home amongst humans or elves, and take take to traveling extensively, because you know, it's it's half elves. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're half elves. 
Uh, half orcs, depending on the locale, half orcs have extremely varied relationships with the people of various communities. For example, most half orcs are looked upon with at least a small amount of suspicion in most dwarven holds. Those spending time in the Dragosian Empire will find they're often treated quite well. Those in Cardula are treated no differently by the citizens there than any other non citizens. Read into that as you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, those of the Caliphate are looked upon as a smidgen of suspicion, given that there aren't any orc tribes anywhere near the Caliphate. Orcs don't tend to live in deserts. <laughs> and thus, people there don't only, only have the tale told them by, other tra by travelers about orcs to go on. It's like, oh, you're a half-orc. Wait a minute. I heard bad stories about these guys. <laughs> I've heard bad things about orcs, but, like... Could be a tall tale. I have no freaking clue. I've never seen anyone like you before. I mean, very few. I mean, dude, orcs don't live in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot uh, there, and it sucks. Yeah. Uh, lastly, the Grubal tribe settled and then created a sizable, a actually stable orc nation on the western continent about 30 years ago. So the human communities in the area have actually had time to normalize relations, uh, relations with this tribe and have thus changed their attitudes towards the half-orcs in the area to generally more favorable ones. I Hey, look, there's there are organized orcs there. They are not raiding and pillaging everything. We can wait. We we can actually like have diplomatic relations with them. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> cool. And tieflings, sometimes incorrectly referred to as demons by the other mortal races, especially the dragonborn of the Dragosian Empire, who definitively refer to them as demons. Basically, yeah, they're not tieflings. They're right. the demons. Tieflings are generally viewed with suspicion by most others. No small part of this due to the fact that the majority of tieflings either reside in or are originally from the Cardul Empire on the northern continent. Uh, the, you, will, you will understand why that's a bit of a thing in a bit. Uh, also, while they're not strictly speaking demons, they do all have demons as ancestors somewhere in their family tree. It's just, like, it may just be way far back. Uh, those demons, those tieflings who do live outside Cardul tend to either live in relative isolation, spend their time traveling, or live in small communities with other tieflings, generally in the larger human cities. Though most major cities have, have, do have at least a small number of tieflings living there. And, uh, yeah, you're a tiefling. That's what I've got yeah. for the races. Um, and again, like, I'm not blocking off other races. I just, you know, I'm not, I don't want to use things that are particularly weird. Yeah, let's, uh, let, let's keep Beholder characters out of the... Oh, just the fuck that, there. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so anyways, we've got the map here. Uh, so a quick, quick and dirty map. So there are three major continents, north, west, east, and a bunch of smaller islands and such. Um, this map is not at all me take, having taken an actual uh, sort of, you know, larger sort of continent thing I did, I drew, and then actually breaking it and moving them apart from each other. That would be ridiculous. Come on. Um... Yeah, the, the, the inner the inner ocean areas are referred to this as the Shattered Star Seas for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> may or may not have been a little boom that, there. That, they're yeah, nothing, it had almost certainly nothing to do with the war between the gods. Nope, not no, at all. Be, come on. Each of the major continents have multiple large ancient teleportation gates that link to one another. Uh, no scholars were exactly where these enormous structures were when these extraordinary storm, enormous structures were built. They've just always been there. While these have been a powerful strategic asset if any nation were to lay claim to them, it has been a long time since anyone has attempted to do so. Whenever anyone is openly considered doing so, they are usually approached by the by the clergy of one of the gods of one of the gods, and told that the ancient gates are by divine mandate not to be claimed or tampered with by any mortal. It has been quite some time since someone was foolish enough to ignore these warnings. Now, I imagine there are, like, free cities and, and trade hubs, like, just sprawled around these things, because, duh. There are, there are probably, there are, there are near them. But, basically, nobody lives right, right near them. Is the thing. Because you're not supposed to. Right. Because if you build a city around it, that would be implying you're laying claim to the gate. And the deity, the gods do not like this, apparently. So, it's very likely people have tried building cities around them, and uh, things have happened to those cities. Sort of get the impression that there's, like, this sort of, like, ruin-haunted, like, wasteland around immediately around this, uh, the uh, the gates. Kinda. That's sort of what I'm going for, yeah. 
Like, you know, yeah, people use them, but, like, the area around them is, is generally... I, I like the idea of it, but, like, the area around the gates being kind of unsettling and feeling kind of wrong. Yeah, I actually get the impression that, like, you can use the gates, but they're not, like, people's preferred mode of travel. Yeah, that's... I, I, that's like, a, yeah. I could use the gate, or I could get into this boat and spend six months at sea. I'll take the boat for six months at sea. But the gates no the one gates... wants to go through the wasteland. I mean, it's not, like... it. It's not that... It's, like, it's actually not, like... Un- particularly unsafe. It's just wrong. <laughs> there's right. Something w- there's there's something wrong about it. Uh, and I've written up a blurb about the the Cardinal Empire because that's the first of the actual major nations that I actually had like actual thoughts about. Right. Um. So it's the largest political body in the known world. Uh, it lays claim to virtually the entire nur- northern continent. They're they are big. They are powerful. Uh, politically, it's arranged in a manner similar to a constitutional monarchy. That's technically how it's set up. Legislation is made up of two elected bodies, the House of Commons, who are elected by the citizens of the Empire. Note, citizens. Right. That does not mean you... That is not... That, that, not people who live in the Empire. That, that, Just the citizens. Those, those, those that have the title citizen. Right. Um, and the House of Lords, who are elected by, who are elected by and from amongst the aristocracy. The judici- judiciary is composed of and chosen by the clergy, who are predominantly followers of the Nameless King, but Integra has a large following in Cardul as well. Uh, that's the goddess of order and knowledge. Right. Uh, an unsurprising certain number of judges are chosen from among her clergy's ranks, for what we call kind of obvious reasons. What, Lastly, you expect to just give up this obvious uh, seat of political power? That would be ridiculous. <laughs> also, you know, yeah, choosing choosing clergy from the goddess of order and knowledge, yeah. that makes a lot of sense for, ju- for, for you know, the judges, you know. Lastly, the emperor, or empress, depend- depending, you know, is the current the current current ruler male or female? <laughs> is effectively uh, the yeah. Is effectively the head Go of the on. executive branch, being the one to enforce laws and being the the one the empire's military answers to. It is debatable who holds the most power in the empire: the emperor or the head of the nameless king's church. The houses of commons and lords serve at the pleasure of the emperor, who holds the power to disband either or both houses. It's like no, 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 fuck you. <laughs> Elect new representatives. You guys suck. <laughs> the emperor is granted their seat of power by the name of the blessing of the nameless king so it is possible that such power could be withdrawn by the church and once long ago this happened the significant majority of the nobility consists of tieflings but there are a few humans and elves who have married into the nobility on extremely rare occasions on even rarer occasions some of the non-tieflings have been granted noble titles All denizens of Cardul who are tieflings are granted citizenship upon request. Non-tieflings must undergo the rights of citizenship and then purchase their certification of citizenship. Non-citizens are welcome to live and trade within Cardul, but they have no vote and less and are less favored both judicially and when it comes to taxes. Slavery is allowed. Slavery is allowed and somewhat common in Cardul, especially when it comes to people who live in places that have been conquered by them. Um, they are not at all modeled on Rome. No, not at all. No, not at all. It is possible for slaves to earn their freedom, with potentially the fastest path to purchasing their freedom being in the gladiatorial arena. And that's what I have for Cardul. And then I've got to write up—I got to write up something for the Caliphate and for the Dragosian Empire, and for at least one other human kingdom. Um, and that's where we are, sort of what I've got. Um, thoughts that I—things uh, that I know I want to put in there. I want there to be a major, okay. uh, major academy on on one of, on the sort of northwestern on the northeastern island. Okay. That's your it's a big mage academy. It's important. It's where a lot of the sort of trained wizards come from. But you know, they don't they don't hold they don't hold much political power. It's just that nobody really, you know, nobody really fucks with them because it's a big a big academy of wizards. It's like Yeah, I I kind of think it's sort of like a um almost like a, a city state unto its own. Yep, but is like militantly apolitical. Yes, that's largely how they kept. It's sort of like magic Switzerland. Kinda, yeah. That that's where I was oh, going. What if they're also the bank, uh, like major bankers? Ooh, that's a good idea. Yes, hang on, let me write this down. Okay, Mage Academy, neutral city state. Maybe major banking. 
And this is the sort. Of, this, this is why what I wanted. To, like this is why I wanted to like do. I actually like the idea of doing this. And it's like, that's a great yeah. idea that I didn't hadn't thought of. Yeah, Switzerland. Well, leads, like, Switzerland the leads the banks, which made me think finance, which made me think they're bankers. Yep. <laughs> the idea of the major, like, ma- like the major academy also being the home of banking is kind of awesome, honestly. Dude, can you imagine diviner debt collectors? Oh god, that'd be awful. And yes, and effective. <laughs> <laughs> no one fucks with the magic piggy bank. That's yeah, a double reason why you don't screw with them. Yes. It's like, it's like, oh, oh, you're attacking us. Fine. We will. You know those your loans. Your assets you t- are now frozen. Your assets are now frozen. You remember that? You, you know the money. Literally, you t- we freeze your assets. They are now inside a block of ice. <laughs> That's why it's called fro- freezing their assets. <laughs> also, we're gonna call in those debts on those th- those loans you took out to buy to pay to pay for your pay for the weapons in your military. Well, we're not going to pay them back. Well, that you can do that, but we have diviners and vote and invokers. <laughs> do you remember how many wizards we have here? Yeah, not all of us are powerful, but you know, most of the world's most of the world's most powerful archmages studied here. Uh, oh, oh, right. Yeah, I imagine a debt collection team is an invoker and a, and a diviner. But the diviner to find the guy and the invoker to make sure it happens. And a group of, like, you know, a fighter thugs to travel with them. Yeah. Oh, you know, bodyguards, because, you know, they're yes. still wizards, still weedy. <laughs> yeah. To steal a term from Ars Magica, grogs. Yeah. Their job is to make sure to, to, to you know, to fight the mook, fight, the mook enemies while the wizards deal with more important things, like that dragon over there. Um. All right, so we've got that. Um. So, uh, so basically, I'm at the point now where I've got you know I've got those. I know you know roughly. I've, I've as I mentioned on a previous podcast, uh, one of the thoughts I had with the Dragonborn specifically is their familial sort of their familial units are more based around. They're not based around bloodlines. They're based around based around who raised you, basically. Yeah, it's a, the the family name is what's important. The family, yeah, right. So, adoption is totally. It's like you know, yeah, that's cool. Adoption, like, it doesn't matter who you, who who your like who your biological parents are. It's who you know, who you're who you've grown up with. Um, well, what about for the for the Dracosian Empire having doing sort of like a a Confucian like familial piety kind of thing? Maybe, I'll jot that or down. Like, I'll jot that down as a possible serve- thought. Yeah, well, you've got like um, like your your first, your first um, what should we call it? The your first duty is always to the family. Yep. And um, you can adopt other other people can be adopted into the family. It's a big deal for this to happen because now they can take on that name, um, because the name is what's important, less the the actual parentage, but the na- but the name a- a- and being um, the the name is what's important. And your first duty is always to- towards your family, and your family's duty is to like the next part up the hierarchy, and so on. And so, if you have this hierarchy of duties, maybe it's, it's something to that, think about. definitely something to think about. Yeah, but yeah, it, is, it, sort of, uh, it sort of grew out of this. That that the idea of this grew out of the whole sort of uh, one of the Viking traditions of you know, yeah, if you're off, you know, if you've gone off a Viking and come back, and your wife's wife's gotten pregnant with another man, whatever, <laughs> that kid's mine. <laughs> That kid's mine, and that I don't. Like, oh yeah, you. So, so she had she had sex with another guy. Okay, whatever. I get to raise the kid. He's my kid. You have no how many people I had sex with when we were Viking. That's. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Yeah. <laughs> I get to have a big family. You don't because you're not married to my wife. Right. <laughs> this is my kid now. But 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 my kid now. My kid. I get to I get to be the one who teaches him, or her. Not you. But yeah, that's the big thing. It's like, you know, being adopted or being born out of wedlock is not a problem. It's, you know, it's a case of, yeah, uh, who who raised you? Who gets to teach you? Yeah. And, and who instills that sense, um, th- those values and um, and sense of duty into you and that and all that stuff. I'm, I'm guessing it sort of grows what out of What traditions a, do you get to carry? Right, exactly. Who's, carry which on. family traditions you do, do you carry on? And it probably grows out of a somewhat low both birth rate, likely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't imagine Dragonborn have a very high birth rate. Yeah. They're... they're I mean, the dragons. They're, they're, yeah, they're dragon... They're, they're dragon peeps. Yeah. 
Um, I'm thinking, speaking of dragons, I'm thinking that your tr- traditional D&D dragons are basically, quote, lesser dragons. Hmm. And there are very few greater dragons out there. Some of them might, some of them might actually be the, who might just be the primal beasts, honestly. It might just be primal, primal beasts, you know. What about the, the Dragosan Empire actually being ruled by a dragon? Oh, that's actually a possibility. Yeah, that's actually not... Like, actually, I like the idea... Like, actually, so let's let's say there are three tiers of dragons. There are the lesser dragons, which are traditional sort of, you know, general sort of run-of-the-mill dragon. There are the greater right. dragons, which are the really high-end D&D dragons. And then there are the primal... Then there are the few dragons that are, that are actually pri- primals, basically. Right. Okay, cool. So, like, the Dragosian Empire is ruled by a greater dragon. Cool. I like that idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, I don't know why, but I just have this like image of like complicated bureaucracies and, and traditions involved with the Dragosan Empire. Like maybe I'm just sort of going into this whole like I think I'm going on an, an ancient China, okay, like tangent here. That's <laughs> an idea. Because uh, well, it's looking at your map. Wh- where is the Dragosan Empire? It is on the western continent. So it's over here somewhere. Okay. So yeah, like the 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 Dragosian Empire is over here. There's probably the the orc the orc nations down here somewhere. There are probably a few earth or, you know. There's likely some. There are pro- there are, there are basically in all the major mountain ranges and all the big continents there are dwarven kingdoms. Okay. So there are dwarf kingdoms in all three continents. Um. But yeah. So. So as I was saying, one of the things I didn't fully write into the thing on uh, Cardul is, you know, one of the general things that if they conquer another nation. Most of the citizenry are, you know, you basically if they go to war with you, if you surrender, you get to become part of the the of the, of the Cardinal Empire as second class citizens and can earn your way to citizenship fairly easily. If you don't, they conquer you and enslave you, and maybe you can earn your way to citizenship then, maybe depends on how well you per- or at least freedom if you're lucky, if yeah. you're super lucky, freedom and possibly even citizenship someday. Who knows? And totally that happens all the time. Yes, totally. Slaves are totally... It's totally a carrot they hang out there just to keep people from... Keep the slave revolts down to a minimum. Uh, <laughs> I, it happens. It does happen because, of course it does. Otherwise, the carrot doesn't work. Exactly. You have to give someone the carrot eventually. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, look. That dude has wor- won- has kicked so much ass in the gladiatorial arena, he's earned his citizenship. All- his freedom. Great. He's decided to buy his citizenship. Even better. Yes, you are a full citizen, citizen because we want your loyalty. You have proven you are a consummate badass. And you being on our side is much better than you not being on our side. <laughs> because the, Dragos- the Cardinal Empire is if nothing if not pragmatic. They're also very regimented because, you know, again, they hmm. <laughs> the two main deities are the gods of light and order. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, war and secrets and knowledge. I mean, yeah. Imagine there's a lot of um, backstabbering and, and and politicking and and cloak and dagger going on in the Cardinal Empire. Possibly, yeah. It's Rome. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yes, there is. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, not necessarily like aesthetically like Chinese because dragons and you can do all sorts of like whatever you want there. No, I'm, 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 like, talking, I, can't, I like the, the idea of like the, the, the hierarchy of duties that each dragon board follows. Yeah, the, like, the idea got, the like, idea of their of the bureaucracy being a thing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, being, you know, there being sort of, you know, a, yeah, like your duty is important and. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the idea, definitely, definitely an idea. We'll, we'll, we'll look into, we'll, it's something to think about that. I should spell that correctly. There we go. Imagine this, uh, imagine this society produces a lot of paladins. I can see that. That, that I'm discussing that you may or may not want to go with. <laughs> That's a possibility. It's, not, it's definitely something to think about. That's why I'm, things I'm noting down. Uh, 
I had not picked a primary deity for the for them. They probably do for for the Dragonborn. Um, the dwarves tend to favor Kishara for what I like to call yeah. obvious reasons. Again, going with sort of the, the, the wacky uniqueness here, what if they don't have a, a, a favored patron deity and instead have a philosophy? Sure. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I like the, like, I actually like that. Like, they are open to, like, all the, all, the entire pantheon. Yeah. They're like, yeah, no, all the gods are great. They're important and they should all be, they, actually, I like that. Yeah. They, they should all be venerated for the, the, they, all, they are all deserving of veneration and none should be held above the other. Yes. Like, like unless you have a, unless you yourself have a particular calling to one of them. Yeah. Like yes. Which is why you have, you have become a, you like, you're, you're either a cleric or a paladin of a particular deity. That's because that is your calling and that is that is your calling. That that is the that that is the the god that is called to you or that you have an affinity to, and that is cool. Yep. <laughs> But like the the overarching philosophy being the more like the uh, the idea of um, more akin to the state religion rather than the ra- rather than what the Cold Cardul Empire has with uh, uh, the Nameless King, mm-hmm. with, with an active and involved uh, with an active priesthood involved in the uh, in the actual government, <laughs> in the actual government and, and politics. Yep. Like I'm sure various priesthoods get involved in the politics in, in the Dragon Empire also, but, but not the... nearly to the same extent or officially. Right. Well, no, it's like they're individual priests who get involved in politics. Yeah. It's it's not that the priests that are involved; it's that priests are involved. Yeah. See, that's no. I have I am a, I am a priest of so and so, and I have chosen to run for office. Yeah. It's not like the clergy is involved; individual priests are involved. Right. I you know I'm a priest and I've just, and I I have chosen to become I've I've chosen to t- take on the duties of being a bureaucrat as well. Right. You know, someone on the imperial council is a, is a, is there some members of the of the of the emperor's council are priests. Yeah, I actually I think the, I like the idea of there being like you know the the you know the, there being a council that the that the you know the drag the the emperor the dragon in charge. Uh, right. Basically, goes, yes, and this, this is, this is. I have chosen this, this group of, you know, of of citizens as, of uh, as my, as you know, as, as my council. So yeah, we got a couple of priests here, some merchants, a couple of farmers. I actually really like that idea. Actually, it's like, yeah, of course, yeah. of course, we have farmers on the goddamn council. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> I actually like that being a, like a major like point of contention, like a, on a, an existential level between. The Kodul and, and, and Durgosan empires, like the the Durgosans, a lot more. Well, well, the Kodul claims to be more egalitarian in practice. Uh, While well, the um, Durgosan it has much more rigid um, hierarchy with the duties, the uh, the Durgosan one is actually a lot more egalitarian in how it actually runs things. Well, yeah, I mean, one of the two groups has an overt nobility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's just start there. <laughs> So yeah, I, 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 I'm digging what we're doing with the with the Dragosan so yep, far. Yeah, I do too. Like, uh... so we've got a, we've got a council which is chosen from like various like roles that is uh, that a, a person might serve and like craftsman slash farmer, the military, the priesthood, merchants, bureaucrats, that kind of thing. And we've got the, the the emperor is one of the greater dragons, and we have this idea of a hierarchy of duties, um, with family being paramount amongst them. Oh, like, I love the, that's a great idea. Like eventually, the emperor will have to choose an heir, like you know, if and when he's eventually... right. Yeah, and it's like it's a and that's part of the whole like part of the reason that's like it's you know family is not about who's born to you, but who you whom is part whom you have raised. Hmm. So it's a case of yeah, the emperor's heir is not like you know necessarily one of his kids it's whom he is designated to be his heir now that's right. probably not for a long time because dragons live a goddamn long time especially right. greater he's a greater dragon so he's it's like as far as his pretty mortal, mortals are concerned um immortal but you know 
And that's part of the reason he has a council, he... of, a, a mortal council, is he's aware that he, since he's basically effectively immortal, yeah, it could lead to stagnation if he's the only one in charge. It might be a lesson hard learned, also. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm betting. But, like I imagine that Carl Duel came in and kicked a whole lot of ass because of his uh, hidebound uh, decision making. Yes. So he, he set up the council after they. I need more flexibility. I clearly yeah, after... need more flexibility. <laughs> been through bullshit and active uh, intervention by a goddamn greater dragon. <laughs> he, uh, he, he created the council. I like that idea. Yeah. And that was God knows how long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime after the War of the Gods, definitely, but... Yeah. Oh, I like that he's actually fairly aware. He probably knows more about the... Uh, or they really because who fuck care, cares what gender of fucking a greater dragon is yeah dragon don't care but I am he who is I am or she I don't know does it matter what do you have in your pants doom <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I will definitely say the emperor probably can polymorph just to make life easier for the citizens yeah I I can I actually, it's actually I imagine there are a lot of tales about him like polymorphing and walking amongst the common people to, to get a feel for things. Also, and, that way he like, actually can have a various stories where he of lives. him doing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that way he have the palace he can live he live in and move around in. Yeah. So yeah, probably it's one like giant room where he can go un unwind and go. Oh, <laughs> oh, that feels so much better. I'm not constrained oh, to a tiny I body. Hate being stuck in that tiny little body. I can stretch my wings. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we got some ideas for that. Um, I need to do some more research on Middle Eastern society, like old Middle East, Middle, East, Middle Eastern societies for the Caliphate. Mm. Yeah, that or at least I need to at least like reread through. Like I gotta track down. Tra I gotta look through like some like some of my old like you know Al Qadim book type things. Yeah, so I can steal some ideas for that from there. Um, I'm thinking more like. Ottoman or Persian? Or... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Persian mostly, honestly. Okay. Uh, which leads to Ottoman to a large degree. Uh, right. Um, I I want to say I think the second biggest major academy is probably in the Caliphate. No, I I get the because you you're doing the the whole like um like. Middle Eastern thing, and it, you, there are a lot of stories coming out of the Middle East about like sorcerers and genies and whatnot. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh, having absolutely. that be a big part of them, like magic being a big part of their thing. Yeah, like that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I, like, I want to um, say the Caliphate is largely like, like whereas you know the 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 academy is you know bankers and mages, the Caliphate is ma magic of all sorts, not just not just wizardry. Um, so like there are a lot of sorcerers and warlocks who hang out in the caliphate also yeah I, I'm, what about like a sorcerer king yeah I, actually I like that yeah like the, the ruling family yeah I like it yeah the ruling family are sorcerers I like that as a general rule of thumb yeah like they've had non-magical like ca caliphs in the past but that's uncommon and even when they're not, they like they generally have like a, a, like an advisor who's a, who's a mage of some sort. Oh, what if there have been like non magical cliffs, but it's always come out after they've um they've passed on that uh, they were non magical because it's always important that the, the, like at, that at least people think that the cliff is a sorcerer. Yes, uh, of some okay. sort. Like, yeah, it turns out that that Abdul was not actually a sorcerer. Uh, or um oh oh I really like the idea that, like that one of the um one of the the like more reviled caliphs was had not been born a sorcerer and was really insecure about it and therefore made a pact and became a warlock and led the caliphate to ruin as a result okay. because of the influence of his patron because he chose a bad patron because he p chose a bad patron or a like, bad patron chose him right. Well, for instance, like sort like sort warlocks are accepted in the caliphate. Yeah. But it will depend somewhat on who who your patron is. Like, oh, you've chosen one of the fans your patron. Well, that's sketchy, but we can work with that. 
Oh, you chose a de- No, no, stop that. No, no demons. Stop that. Stop. No, this is one of the demons that's not the worst. <laughs> oh, you chose you chose a demon. I, I did. Oh, uh, you might want to look over that contract. They're pretty sketchy. Uh, maybe. I chose a great old one. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, out, out, out. <laughs> uh, there are other uh there are other patrons in the um in Xanathar's guide, so like there's like I, I imagine like celestial warlocks are, are particularly respected. Because if you manage to get the, the attention of a celestial, that that's a big deal. Right. Um and I think Hexblades are like generally like generals, I think. Okay, I like it. But yeah, magic's a like, big thing. Um, yeah, magic's a big thing. I want to say and the, like, what, like, and, like, and as opposed to the, you know, the Mage Academy being all the banking, the Caliphates are, are, are the merchant caste is big there. Yeah, they're big into trade. They're big into trade. They're big into magic. Which means it's they are weirdly they they have a weird veneration for Oceana that you wouldn't yeah. like. You were like the you wouldn't expect from a from a desert, a, a desert country. Well, yeah. and, but then you think of it, it's like okay, they're big into trade. And water is really important to them. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, I like to think like they really vet, like they venerate the twins because, of course, they do. Fire and water are both very important in the desert. Yep. And I bet you, I want to think there's there's also a a a small and I also a somewhat substantial um, uh, uh, following of Tempestus there also the the god of air. Yeah, because of uh, sandstorms and exactly and whatnot. You know the the winds are important. I like the idea that that Tempestos is always like portrayed as a like a a wild haired bearded gaunt old man you know, wielding lightning bolts in either hand. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting idea. Cool, it very well might be. <laughs> I'm just sort of noting some things down. Uh... Um, I spell sorcerer correctly. And eh, whatever, spell check will catch it later. <laughs> it does, but I like correcting it when I when I when I, when I notice it. So we have. A reason for Cardul and Dragosa to to uh, be in conflict. What about the Caliphate and Cardul and Cardul and Dragosa? Oh, their interactions. That's a good question. Um, they probably have had a ton of interaction with. They've had. They probably had mostly had like. They probably had a trading relationship with Dragosia, of mm. some sort, and they probably haven't interacted a lot with Cardul, uh, largely due to the fact that it's a pain in the ass to get there. Mm. No, 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 no. I have a better idea. They have a trading relationship with them, but the Cardul's never actually directly attacked them. They're one of the few places that Cardul's not actually attacked, like even like directly. It's like Cardul's had like you know wars. Actually, Cardul's probably actually no. Cardul's I don't know. Cardul's been at war with everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I was gonna say like Cardul seems like the kind of guys that like don't care. We're... I like the idea that the Cardul um, Empire attacked the Caliphate, like conquered a big chunk of it, and decided that like the the resource they were sending back was not worth the investment of their garrison and pulled out. Oh yeah, it's sort of like you know, it's a case of yeah, oh you've taken some of our territory. We'll see how you like it in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> Very much the like, yeah, it's the inverse yeah, the, of Russia. I like the idea. Yes, I like the idea that the Caliphate's reaction to um to invasion is the anti-Russia. <laughs> it's like yeah, we okay, yep, all right. So you are you are invading our desert nation. All right. So until summer, we are going to raid you with 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 you know with with you know with camel riders, camel riders, and and summon monsters and sorcery and and. and general we're not going to directly asshole. confront you until summer and then summer happens <laughs> and cardinal's like yeah we're, this is awesome it's like yeah the rays are annoying it's like keeping us on all right god it's getting hot and 
Oh, oh, here comes the cal- The caliphate's coming. Okay, great. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why did our water source just dry up? Oh my god, was this a seasonal water source? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, those bastards. Oh, they were waiting, weren't they? Oh, oh no. We were not prepared. Right? Back through the gate! Back through the gate! <laughs> they lost a lot of troops getting back through the gate, and basically, yeah, we're not going back there until we can act, we can just, we can crush them in one fell swoop. Well, it's sort of a, um, sort of a case of, like, well, we can't conquer them, and it's not the, the area, well, we can conquer them, but they come back in the summer, and it sucks. And it's not worth the, the investment. Right, so we do, so we let's do, engage we do. them in trade. Yeah. <laughs> And diplomacy. That's how we deal with the caliphate. Yes. So I, I like the idea also, like, they did, like, you know, that, like, there are, like, in Cardul, there are factions, like, they want to conquer the, the caliphate badly. It's like, they keep coming, like, we need a plan. The plan is we have to, we can't dick around. We have to just crush the capital. That's what we have to hit. We can't hit anything else. Right. How do we get to the capital? Well, we storm the gate and we rush the capital. Through, we rush uh, through like the, the desert. Idea. Yeah. We rush <laughs> through the desert. All right. Yeah. Do, so, how are we going to get move quickly through the desert? Well, the Calvay does. They have camels. Well, we can have camels as many as they do. Do we have time to train our cavalry to learn to, our cavalry people? Our cavalry people how to ride camels into battle. Do you know how annoying camels are to ride into battle? <laughs> are you daft? But but we should conquer them. We, we 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 are supposed to conquer everybody. We are trading with them. Well, we have our trained bullet crew. Yeah, that's great until they decide to start burrowing and leave the, their soldiers, like, on the ground. Well, you know, that it was an idea. <laughs> well, we'll, well that, here's the obvious answer. We'll best them with, with magic. We'll use, our, we'll use our, our wizards and our clergy and... Wait, you're talking about attacking the caliphate with magic. You're right, what was I thinking? Who do you think we are? The Academy? That's it. We should conquer the Academy. Are you dumb? <laughs> but if we were conquering the Academy, we'd have their wizards on our side. Do, do you know how the Academy operates? No? Um. I, yeah, I like the idea that like the, the Caliphate has like great resources, particularly like in precious metals. But like to get to the to get there, it's surrounded by desert. <laughs> Probably, I like the idea that the uh, the caliphate actually has probably the best like actual raw resource, uh, raw natural resources, out of all of them. But it's like at the center of the caliphate, like where the capital is. Yeah, and it's surrounded by by desert. Like the the capital is built around like an, an oasis and like it, like a goddamn like Garden of Eden is at the center of this desert. Yeah, a- and getting there is just sucks balls. <laughs> And weirdly, there are no there are no there are no gates right near the capital. Right. Just happened that way. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, all right, so we got some ideas for the caliphate. That's great. That helps a lot, actually. Um, so those are the three. Those are the, those in the with those in the Mages Academy, which I need to come up with a, a name for the Academy, be, 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 other than Mages Academy. Um. So yeah, like you know, it's just pound on your t- uh, keyboard enough times, then try to sound it out and throw some random apostrophes in there. And there, that sounds magical. <laughs> so yeah, I think also there, as I said, they're going to be like, and as I said, there's going to be ma- major dwarven nations in all three major continents. Yep, because. I, basically, where there are mountains, there be dwarves. <laughs> it just happens. Cool. I think there. I think um, there are also partly portions of the eastern continent that are not just desert. It's just that a lot of the eastern continent is desert. A lot of like what's at, like easily accessible by the um by the, the adjoining, but via the ocean, via the uh, adjoining continents is desert. So like, there's a like along the coastlines is nice because it's you know, it's, it's on the coastline. Right, and then it sort of falls into desert, and then sort of like in the deep middle is actually nice again, and then there are pockets of decent stuff like along the back edge of the continent, away from everybody else. Yeah, 
So like there's like you know there's like some like you know reasonably nice stuff over here and such. Like when I actually yeah, do the like, actual like, map, as opposed yeah, to like uh, like map. the eastern part of the the Caliphate Condon is actually rather nice. Yeah, but like, like the the western part, the part that's close to everyone else, is it's like is there's the, a coast. There's a which great is, big band of desert. Like there's the coast, desert, the capital, and everything past the capital is actually decent. Is nice also. Yeah. Like. So it's like it's you know basically it's the lower chunk down here. So it's like the eastern the south like from the east down to the southeast is is yeah. I like that. And like there probably there 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 are almost certainly going to be like you know city states and such like on the smaller on the other other major islands and such. Yeah 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 like um they're going to be city states they're probably like small other con um uh. uh countries that aren't like the major empires that that exist on these oh yeah there totally are um of various types imagine the various human kingdoms have like um wherever you would decide to stick them have sort of a a like holy roman empire feel it's like yeah we're constantly bickering and we're all independent countries until you fuck with one of them and they all go no nope (laughs) (laughs) okay i like that I like to think that like, most of those... Well, like, Lackey and Bohemia might constantly be fighting, but as soon as you fuck with one of them, they are united against you. <laughs> right. I, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Like, that was... The, that was that was, And the reason is because they saw what happened on the northern continent. Yes. They, they were bickering fighting, and the Cardul ate them, like, one at a time. Omph, omph, yep. omph, omph, omph. And so, like, the ones in the western continent are like, you know, like, we'll keep bickering, but if anyone screws with us, we got a pact, right? Yep. So if they attack yep. you, I come to your defense. You they attack me, I come to your, you come to my defense. Yep. How about Bob over there? Yep. We cannot let a larger empire absorb us. But just no. But the Grosians seem decent. No. There's like a there's probably like a high king who actually has no actual power, um, except in times of war. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yes. Like there's a high king and he doesn't actually have any actual power except in times of war, in which case he he is obeyed as anyone uh, as as the high king, as the guy who is actually in charge, he is basically the, and he's elected from the royal families of each of them, like, and it's until he steps down or whatever. Or maybe it's like a a a, fa- a a family that just got selected and they've just have had held the title of high king for like generations, <laughs> something like that. No, I like the idea. I like the idea that the. I here's the, my thought: the seat of the high king rotates generationally. Ah, yes. Okay, that makes that sense. that way. No one kingdom has power over the others indefinitely even in times of war it's like so that that, that basically means that unless like it, it's a disincentive towards um provoking like to provoking like a false flag type thing to get like someone get provoking someone to attack them to unite them so that you, you can then, then take over right the high king has never ever been assassinated in order to forward it along the cycle no nope. that's never happened happens all the time <laughs> So yes, when like when the high king dies, the new high king is the ne- is the next kingdom on the on the on the rotation. Whoever the current yeah on the is. list yeah. And, and assassination never ever happens. I mean, no, just because every high king ha- has died within a decade of choosing that place from things like falling onto a knife 150 times. I, or, I don't um... think it's happened that often, but it's it's something like <laughs> like assassination att- assassination attempts are common. Okay. But like they've gotten good at like protecting the king. <laughs> it's like after the first like dozen assassinations, they're like, you know, this is stupid. We should actually like protect the king so that this doesn't keep happening. Like, yes, people are gonna get, like it's you're going to pro forma attempt to assassinate the ki- the high king. Like that happens. The high king was accidentally exsanguinated. <laughs> oh god damn it, they actually succeeded. Ugh, all right, next up. But I don't want to be high king right now. Ugh. Too late. 
God damn it, I have to spend, spend more of my budget on on, on bodyguards. <laughs> damn it. Like, that's, I, I like love, that. Yeah, that someone tries to t assassinate the High King so that their um their rivals become High King, so that they have to now devote attention to other stuff other than just their country. Yes. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> No one actually wants to be a high king. <laughs> so yeah, you don't assassinate to, be, to make your make, to give your kingdom the, the the kingship, the the title. You do it to give it to somebody else. <laughs> yes. But you but you would never assassinate your own king because that's stupid. Right. Unless oh, someone because... wanted to actually be king, yeah. Because I'm sure that happens. Oh well, sure, like yeah. Say, oh, I want to move up the totem pole in my own family, and I get to be high king. But I, it's like. Maybe I should wait until after. Oh, God damn it! If I assassinate him now, then we get the we get the. Th but the, that, oh, that's great! It's like we're next up with the block to be high king. I don't want, but I want to be king. <laughs> but if I kill, if I kill dad, I and they have this image of like assassins and counter assassins from various families. <laughs> <laughs> it's very complicated. But like, it's not necessarily actually that complicated. There's a lot of politicking about it, like. We have assassins that we, we want, we could use, but we're not going to actually use them. It's mm. so like, in theory, there are a lot of really good assassinations in the, in, in the human kingdoms here. But no one's entirely certain exactly how good they are, because they don't get used as often as they should. They've got... I like to think there's actually, like, an assassin's, like, you know, an assassin's guild. There's, like, an actual assassin. Uh, yeah, like, this is where the assassin's, assassin's guild, guild is. Yeah. And they're considered the best assassins in the world, but no one's entirely positive that's the case. <laughs> They have the reputation for being the best assassins, right. but no one's sure. <laughs> and they've heard, maybe they really are. Maybe they really are. Maybe it's just a really good... Uh, maybe they just got a really good marketing team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's something to keep... It, keep yep. All right. I like that idea a lot. Um, yeah, I, also, like, Cardul has not yet successfully conquered the dwarves because... All right, we're going to go invade the dwarves in their mountains. Yeah. That's gonna suck. Cardu yeah, the, the Cardul Empire has, like... Yeah, like, again, they've, they've tried they in the past, good. and... They've tried in the past, and, and they, they could know they could take the dwarves um, on the open field. Yes. As soon as it goes to tunnel fighting, it's just terrible. So, yes, we could run over their surf the, the, the surface dwarf communities, who will then fall back into the mountains and... Oh. All right, well, we're going to negotiate. Okay, we roll over them, and we can't get... The, we hit a brick wall when we get to the mountains. Fine, we'll negotiate a, uh, we'll negotiate a tr treaties with you guys. Oh, you want to negotiate with us now, do you? <laughs> yes. Fine, we'll send our diplomats. Oh, no. Dwarven diplomats, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to negotiate with the Dwarven diplomats, because it's just like, you always end up losing. Somehow. <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, as a point of it, uh, as a, a to make a point, it is always that diplomats are always chosen from surface doors that were displaced by the invasion. Yes. <laughs> so they have because they have a grudge. Yes. See, oh, <laughs> but they're but I like the idea of the dwarves being actually actively good at, this, at diplomacy. So you don't really yes. realize you're being screwed by them until it's way too late. So, okay, we signed the treaty. Everything's great. And wait a minute. Oh, one of the the dwarven things during negotiations, they bring the, the their ancestral like book of grudges, and they're constantly marking in it whether or not it's actually with ink is a good question. Whether they're crossing things off or writing new things, you don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's actually a thought, something to keep a thought to keep in mind. Um. Uh, all right, that's good. Uh, so we got that. Uh, and again, there are elven communities scattered across, like in various you know yep. forests across the, anywhere. Anywhere there's a major forest, they're going to be Sylvani. Like that's yep. just going to happen. I, I here's my thought with the Sylvani and the and Cardul. Cardul's never actually tried to conquer the Sylvani because the Sylvani are just like, yeah, you can use the woods. Just don't over don't don't over exploit them, and we're fine with that. Yeah, I, I like the idea that the... It's like, we want the resources here. Okay. Well, there have been occasional conflicts because obviously, like, the um, the Sylvani are just so 
dispersed that uh, and right. really have a, any kind of a, a central government. That's just there's no point. Yes, and like Cardinal's like these are our forests now. Well, they're our forests too, but that's fine. You're welcome to make use of the forests. We are. It's like trying to conquer the Mongols uh, uh, in Mongolia. Right. Like you can try, I guess. Congratulations, you've got that patch of the plains. We'll still move through it as we want because you can't stop us. We'll probably never know we were there. <laughs> okay, so but, but, wait, we can use the force. Absolutely. Just don't over. Don't. Well, it's not like it belongs to anyone. Just you know, don't be dicks about it. Don't over. Don't don't over exploit them. Don't bur- don't don't slash and burn. We'll tell. We we'll happily tell you what parts of the forest are pr- great to harvest from right now, and we'll grow back in time. It'll be great. We'll help. We'll gladly help you with that. Why? Well, because it's because we the can't. Forest. Because we can't use it all right now anyway. There's like thirty of us. <laughs> you need. You guys won't need have use of the re- need need the resources. That's fine. Trees grow back. They're a replaceable resource. We just want to point to the trees that are actually usable. That would that won't actually harm the forest long term. Wait, so you mean you're gonna help us use the resources that we we need and make sure that we always have those resources available? Yeah. Okay. What's 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 in it for you? The the forest is still here, and you leave us alone. We guys still need to pay taxes. Uh, yeah. Good luck collecting that. You you think you can collect taxes from us? Sure, we'll pay taxes. <laughs> if you want to hire someone to be hire an elf to be a guide in some parts of the forest, we'll happily we'll happily work for you for that. Uh, okay. All we ask is that you leave us mostly alone, and that if one of us, if if, if some Sylvani decides they want to move to move move to one of your cities, that you do not that you do not enslave them. Uh, I like that there are basically there are ba- there are basically no elven slaves, mm. entirely because of the deals the, the 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 because because of deals like this like, not because like you know it's it's like it's hard to enslave an elf it's perfectly it's no harder to enslave an elf than anybody else it's just you know you've got deals like that we've got deals that the, the Sylvania are like yeah you don't enslave our people we don't we, we don't fight a guerrilla war that you can't we don't fight engage you in a guerrilla war you can't hope to win. I like the um Also, you don't want to I piss think up there the are seat. occasionally elven slaves, but it's like well, they broke the law and that that's the Oh, part. sure, yeah, no, that yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I I don't it's mean not like literally it's no. forbidden to keep elven slaves. No, it's not it's like just, that. No, it's just that yeah. they don't actively like, you know, you they, they don't are... actively harvest the elves, so to right, speak. Right, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Again, Cardul is not the nicest place in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's they're, really they're easy nice. to live there in a lot of ways. But you real it's like it's like you real it eventually realize, yeah, this is uh Oh great. We're in a fantasy dystopia. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> and again, well, for a lot of people they present it to them as, as a utopia because anybody can re- it's a mer- it's, yep. We're largely a meritocracy. No, you're not. Stop lying. No, you're not. You have actual nobles. Stop it. We've granted noble titles to non-nobles before, because you know if you truly but deserve it, we will make you part of the nobility. <laughs> what? <laughs> like once a generation? <laughs> if you prove that you truly deserve to be, be you that you pr- proved immense worth to the Cardinal Empire, we will bring you bring your fa- you and your family to the nobility because you will have earned it. Because we're this is a meritocracy. So why is the ruling family been the same family since um, uh, we've lost track of how many dec- how, how many centuries the same family's been in charge here well they've they've contributed the most to, to they have the blessing of, of the, the of the nameless king so of course they're the imperial family they are blessed they're blessed of the gods oh for crying out loud it's not actually a theocracy but it's awfully close yeah because while the well, yeah, there's you know on the surface, the, the clergy and the royal family get along really well. They don't really get along very well. Yeah, that, that's the the political fiction they work on for the masses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yes, the emperor's like I know. 
the most galling thing about the church is they can strip me of my title. They won't because it didn't, like, they've done it, but it didn't go well for Cardool. Well, not immediately. It improved immensely once we right. chose a new, new, new royal family, but... Because admittedly, that that particular emperor was a lunatic nutbag and needed to be deposed. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, he decided that you know I'm going. He was like, <laughs> I've decided we're going to worship the great old ones. What? No. What? No. Ah, <laughs> see, isn't this great? Oh, hail Cthulhu! No, no, stop, stop, <laughs> stop trying to wake up the monster man. Um, church? Can't, can't you do something? Wait, 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 there's a clause in one of the books that says we can depose him. He is not the emperor. He's still technically... Ch- a large chunk of the army still answering to him. Well, we legally can cut his head off now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alright. So yeah, I mean... I I th- you know, we're I'm actually I don't say at this point with the stuff we've done done today and what I've had before like yeah. I literally just want to come with blurbs for each of the of the deities and then write up the little write up little blurbs from the stuff we have for the for the caliphate the Dragosian Empire and for like the dwarves and, and dwarves and elven, elven dwarven and elven king the dwarven kingdoms and the elven you know tribes okay yeah oh I also need to do something we need to do something about the the about the that or that or group of orcs the orc kingdom oh right the orc nation um. Because I, 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 there's, I, there's definitely, I want there to be a, quote, civilized. And I, 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 I the, my thought is, is, isn't so much that the orcs, are, orcs are not, like, orcs are, cons- like, have long been considered, you know, uncivilized barbarians, but they really aren't. They're just nomadic. Yeah, that sort of getting, like, sort of like the Mongols. Right, exactly. And one particular group of orcs has actually settled down and formed an actual, like, country and people are saying people get to see what the orcs are like you know actually get to see what they're like their what their actual culture is like now because they're not just wandering nomads it's like oh okay oh we can actually work with the we can actually work with you crap wish we'd known that i mean it's hard to like you can't negotiate with a nomadic tribe very well because they're not going to be here next month <laughs> right <laughs> But uh, okay. So let's talk about the 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 orc, um, which I named actually. Yeah. Uh, Grubal. The Grubal Grub- tribe. Yeah, the the Grubal tribe or or nation or kingdom. Well, it's. It, I I like that it's not actually a monarchy. Okay. I again there I th- I like to think it's a it's sort of for like you know it's a. Actually, they might actually be like actually sort of somewhat democratic. The way a lot of the way a lot of uh, like the native tribes were in the U.S. Hmm. I like they're a lot like the Iroquois. Okay, I can see that. That'd be actually kind of cool. Like the orcs, like the Grubal, the Grubal are like the Iroquois of the of the the orcs. I'll have to look up some stuff on the Iroquois now. Yeah, <laughs> because the Iroquois are interesting. I, that's sort of the starting point. They'll obviously end up being differently, because, different because duh. Because duh, because they're they're, they're fantasy orcs, but they're like fantasy using orcs, that as like a basis for like it's a, a starting system. point for like it, it, yeah. where to draw some ideas from. So like you know they are, you know they've got maybe not necessarily like the Iroquois, but like they they've got sort of a tribal council who are who are elected. Hmm. Um. Uh. Actually, I also like the idea that their leaders, uh, like the, it's you know. They've got they they do have a chief, but the chief is the military leader, not the like not like the yeah, like in times of like in times of strife, the chief leads that leads the leads the warriors, but he's not the you know the, he's not the leader of the community, he's important and respected, but he's not the one who make, makes the day to day decisions. That's the council the that's the council of that, elders. Yeah, that makes sense. Like you've got a con or or a war chief or something. Right, exactly, and like there's a council. I like the idea of there being a council of elders. Yeah. Like you know, it's 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 people who have it's orcs who have lived long enough to uh, to accumulated wisdom as far as they're it's sort of is the thought. Yeah, so, I actually like the idea that um, it, it sort of in keeping with the whole fantasy orc thing anyway. Like, strength and combat prowess are really big and important for orcs, 
And anyone who's managed to last to lo- to old age is to be respected because orcs aren't supposed to last to long age. It doesn't. It, it 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 traditionally doesn't happen very often because you know they are right. They are warrior based nomadic people. Right. So like, it's the old adage like, respect any old men in professions that where people die young. <laughs> right. So like you know, and, and it's I I also like the idea, again, and I'm pretty sure that, like orcs are very much like you know gender equal because like yeah no yeah. Well, you know what? Like, I like the, it's like the quote about the 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 drag from the drag from uh Discworld. Do you know what Drake think about women in combat? Yes, we expect them to be very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, they're female. Of course, they're female orc warriors. They kick. They're orcs. They're orcs. I mean, they're they're orcs. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so I like, the idea, like, I like the idea. Like, I like the idea that like the like they're far, they're orcs or farmers. They're also still warriors. Because orcs are warriors, like this is orcs what are warriors. orcs do. That's, of, that's just all, part of their every all, all orcs are like they all orcs receive at least a little bit of tra- at least at least some training with 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 weapons. They're taught yep. how to fight because this is what orcs do. Now, if you if an orc, especially if in Grubal, especially like some orcs are now basically going, well, I don't want to focus on being a warrior. I have inclinations towards the priesthood, or towards you know. Uh, or towards you know craftsmanship, craftsmanship or... or farming or. Or trade, and they're like, okay, you should still practice with your sword, well, your axe, and such. Well, of course, I'm an orc. Yeah, it's, like I, I like the idea that like um, asking an orc to go unarmed is like this gigantic insult. <laughs> yes, See. it's like you want me to go unarmed? Are you what? <laughs> you want me to go without my pants on? What? <laughs> an orc is never dressed uh, um without a weapon, right? <laughs> Uh, so I like the, so I like the idea of, like you know when you like a, a diplomat from Grubal shows up somewhere it's like yeah you're not supposed to carry weapons like, no 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 you can keep your hand axe just leave your battle axe at the door that's all we ask but no, yeah. keep, keep your hand axe and your dagger that, that's fine just make sure you're wearing them where we can see them well why would why would I wear them where you couldn't see them of course I want you to see them how else do you know that I'm dressed. <laughs> <laughs> I like the um I like the idea that like Grubal has developed the, this uh reputation for plain but finely crafted goods. Yes, okay. Like their their shit like is not pretty at all, but you will not find tougher th- stuff outside of a, a, a dwarven master craftsman. Right. Like yeah, dwarves will look dwarves will look at Grubali craft and go, Oh god, that's rough, but it'll hold up. <laughs> Like I I do I would use that tool. It's got I mean, the aesthetic sense of an unhewn rock, but it's as tough as an unhewn rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I mean I like I wouldn't wouldn't choose to use that hammer that that orc made, but if I didn't have one of my own hammers, I'd use it. Certainly use it more than this human crap. Dear God, those uh, that crap that the uh, Cardul will export. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that Cardul makes good good craftsmanship, but they don't export it. Yes. Why would you? Why would we sell our good stuff to our enemies? I mean, our trade partners. <laughs> or future enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as far as Cardul is concerned, everybody is is a future is a is either an enemy or will be an enemy. Right. But they're very good. They they understand that you know no we don't say you don't say that. That's the quiet stuff. You don't say the quiet stuff out loud. They've gotten much better at that over the over the centuries. Yes. <laughs> See, oh no 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 no, we are past our conquering ways. I mean, not entirely. I mean, they they started or, it, or so we're gonna, so we but... conquered them. We had to protect that border, so we conquered them and incorporated them to the empire. But they, what, what what were you protecting that border from? We had to protect that border. We're not the aggressors. We might have swung first, but we're not the aggressors. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got we have we have an idea for for Grubal now. Um, all right, are there any of the? Like, I don't I don't know what other what other speed races are out there that I that. I should be including. I know Gav wanted to have something aquatic in originally, sort of semi-aquatic in nature. 
Right. It was like, like either like I forget it was like the siren or something like that. Which I'm fine with. Like there there are yeah. of course there are mer people. They are. They live in the oceans. But yep. Like I haven't detailed them because like you know. Because they're not important yet. They're not important yet. You'll you'll get to them eventually. Like um. Yeah, like uh, like if the, like any like if there's like if when the, when we get the group together, like I'm at the point now, I think where if people want to play stuff that's not on the list I already have, I can add I can now add them to the list. Cool. And work them in. Because we have enough of a framework to say, okay, this is how these people would work in. As long as we don't get too wonky, you know. Right. As long as things don't get too... Yeah, as long as no one's playing anything like, I want to play a half-drow, half-dragon, vampire, lizard man. Like, you know, if no okay, one's playing first, a shard mind... As <laughs> long as no one's playing a shard mind... Yeah. Or, like... <laughs> Or a Genasi. <laughs> yeah, like, the Genasi actually work reasonably... I actually know where I could work the Genasi in really easily. Okay. They work really well into the area around the Caliphate. They're the descendants of the Jin. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they work really well in there. Like, if someone like, wanted to play a Genasi, sure. Fine with that. Like, hell, I might actually I'd say, yeah, the Genasi exist. They they live in the... Like, they predominantly live, in the, live on the Eastern Continent. They are the descendants of the Jin, mostly. That's what they're largely considered. You know, they're you know, they're partial elementals. Well, yeah, okay, cool. You know, the, the the various you know types of the jinn, not just like not just the jinn, but like the afrit and right the uh, whatever the water one is called. I can't remember. I forget. There, there, you know, but yeah. So there is one for each of the major elements. Yep. Easy. Yeah. And you know, and the eastern continent is the home is the home of that is is like the native home of them on the, in our plane. Right. Which At I, least again, where they had the closest connection to our plane. Yes. Cool. I like that. There's a bit more world building right there. Yep. <laughs> Poof. Done. Thunk. That's a lot to work in the dock, but that's fine. That won't take long. That'll just go into the. Uh, I mean, let me note this down so I don't forget it. Actually. Uh. Well, it's also like not important unless someone wants to play a Genasi. I imagine they're rare enough that like, until someone de declares, oh, I want to play a Genasi. <laughs> I like the. T I, I'm gonna go with the title. The title of the uh, military leader of the the Grubal of the Grubali uh, being the, being Khan. I like that. Yeah, I just like the ter the title Khan in general. I do too. Just it's a good title. The um, like I've mentioned that I, I kind of want to play a goblin warlock to you, and I yep. just. Just having goblins just be goblins, I think, works best for the character. Sure. Just horrible little. Uh, like... I, 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 here's the thing. Yeah. I like the, the, if you want if you want to play a goblin, I I will say that there will be small goblin communities in various nations. They'll probably sure. live in like live in like little ghettos in various in various towns. Sure, that be, makes sense. It's see, yeah, like yeah, there are goblins there. We we don't fully trust them, and they tend to keep to themselves. But they're useful. You know, they're small. They're they 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 can do a lot of things. Half of these can do. So you know, they, Just, they're, you know they're... with more stabbing and giggling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we, uh, da, 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 da. Fra I was forgetting what the term is. Uh, elemental people. Uh, uh, Genasi. Genasi. So have to add to the, just adding stuff to the, my little my little sort of side notes doc I've got going. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, just basically have to do a little blurb for the various deities, uh, just to give more feel for who they are. Right. But I'm gonna definitely make sure to note. I'm gonna actually note this down my notes. Both Terran Mortis are all about the cycle I mean it's you know it's the cycle of life versus the cycle of death but still but they two of them lead into each other <laughs> the cycle of life feeds into the cycle of death and the cycle of death feeds into the cycle of life it's all one big exactly. thing yep. it's all one big thing 
So while they are opposing forces, they are not actually enemies. <laughs> that, that's a, that's the important thing about the the about the my, my sort of date my primal forces chart. It's not necessarily that they're either that the, two, the things on the either side are either diametrically the opposite of each other or are diametr or necessarily enemies or anything. It's that they are they are in some way opposed to each other. Mm. It could be that you know they are merely the, they are merely each, the mirror image of each other, or they are directly opposite of one another, like order and chaos. They aren't necessarily enemies; they're just they're opposite of each other. Same with light and darkness. Right. And in fact, that's one of the things I like is that you know, and one thing I've done is that you know, and this might actually be the case. Actually, honestly, is that you know, light and darkness, like they they are all sibling pairs in some way, shape, or yes. form. So, you know, light and darkness are related to each other. Fire and water are related to each other. Earth and air are related to each other. Order and chaos are related to each other. Nature uh, and death are oh. nature and death are the old are old gods, so they're related to each other. <laughs> oh, in, in in related to each other, I like the idea that um, Terra and, and Tempestos. Um, Mortis? You mean oh, Tempe oh Tempestos? No, 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 no the, 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 the Earth goddess and the air god. Oh, the earth, like, you, earth, you mean Earth and Air? So, that's, so that yeah. would be uh, uh, double, 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 wrong. wrong line. I thought it was Terra. And, no, Terra's and nature. Oh, okay. Kishara is, is the Earth goddess. Okay, Kishara and, and Tepestos, um, are actually married and hate each other. <laughs> Both love sort of like each a, other. A Zeus Terra kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> Like they're constantly fucking with each other's um uh stuff. A and doing shit to get underneath each other's skin. <laughs> and no one wants to get involved because it's a married couple spat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, the other important it note has been that, happening for eons. <laughs> right. The other important note is uh is the gods all do recognize the nameless king as being the, you know, the first among equals. Right. Because he's the one who he's the one who led the led the gods against the old gods and led them to victory, right? Also, you know, you, you know, he's the unco you know, <laughs> he, you know, he's you know, he's the victor he's he is the he is the victorious. He's you know, he's you know, the right. He is the f um. I like the idea that like one of the reasons that like, uh, Kakara and, and Tepestos like ended up together. Is that they're both the only ones that call uh, the nameless king on his shit to his face? <laughs> like she, like like Kakara does it in like the, the very sort of like matronly, like big sister kind of way, like not bothering to like separate him out from his friends to to call him on his shit. And Tapester just shouts it at the top of his lungs in his face in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that, we could, that that's something that definitely like, that there's a there's a, a degree of contention between the three of them. <laughs> sure. I mean, they're not directly aligned with each other. They're not. They're neither aligned or opposed to each other. So. Yes. So there, there's that like weird content like. They're all droogs that constantly fight with one another, kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's something to think about. I like it. So yeah, um like Tempestos is a, a a loud, irritating skinny bastard, but he he brings the the pain when he needs to. Right. <laughs> and Kakaras, well, she keeps every she's the den mother. She keeps everything together and and builds stuff for everyone. But goddamn, she's a condescending bitch. <laughs> I I'm, I'm sorry. She is actually technically she is technically aligned to 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 the unnamed king. But again, this all makes sense. Yeah, but she could be, yeah, but she could be a condescending bitch sometimes. But she's the one that like keeps everything together and like builds things for everyone. And and uh, Tempestos is like he gets shit done as long as it involves breaking things. But he's a loudmouth dog fucker <laughs> <laughs> with zero tact. <laughs> right. 
dude has no chill to put it uh, to use the vernacular. <laughs> I the thing I got a lot of chill. He's the god of storms, but <laughs> yeah, I like the. By the way, I like the idea that almost nobody likes the name. None of the other gods like the nameless king, but they all respect him. Yes. Because again, he's first among equals, but like they're all like, yeah, but he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like we all like his, we all like you know, we all like Sidious. Sidious better, but Sidious is just not a. He's not a leader. He's not a leader. Everybody likes Sidious. Sidious has a personality and a sense of humor, <laughs> but he's got no ambition. <laughs> The only thing Sidious like the, the only thing Sidious gets passionate about is the fact that he you know he is you know he is his brother's opposite you know <laughs> yeah all right we got we got stuff awesome but yeah Sidious is definitely like the, the patron of like is like the is one of the gods that the halflings revere he's definitely one of the gods that the gnomes yep. revere um he's probably the god that he's probably the god the goblins revere most yeah um. I'm guessing that the orcs are probably big into Terra, actually, especially the the uh, you know the the her aspect of you know the uh, of uh, 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 the um, the Queen of Fangs. The Queen of Fangs, yeah, yeah. Like you know the rest of it too, but like Terra and Tephistos seem like the the ones that yeah, orcs totally. really get into. Yeah, totally. Because you know the winds are a big thing for like you know on the open plains. Yep, the winds are the winds are a big thing. Um, Knowing when storms are going to come. Yeah, so you always pay attention to storms when you're nomads. Yep, and like, yeah, he, he just less air, more destruction, uh, or less war, more destruction, because they're not there to conquer territory. They're not there to because right. when they go on raids, they're not conquering territory. They're not they're like there to, they're there to take resources. They're there to take resources or to keep someone from being a threat by hitting them first. Right. They're not there for territory. They're not there to rule over anyone. They're there to break shit and take what they need. <laughs> that's how orcs go to war, and that's why they're infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, I think we got a good we got a good chunk of what work done on this, and I think that actually gets me much much clo like what we've done today is actually help me codify a lot of stuff I've had in my head. Awesome. I'm glad. And that will actually, I think, gets me much closer to being in a state where I can actually run something. <laughs> awesome. I I'm gl I know you've been struggling with this for a while, so I'm glad we did this. Yeah, same. But I think we should wrap things up so that you can go eat. <laughs> yeah, we, we've gone long, we but have. Uh, it was good work. Yes. So that's going to do so. it for this week. Uh, normally, I'd save time for viewer questions at the end of each episode, but uh, we, we run long. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have enjoyed sort of seeing sort of a large chunk of the way I tend to think about designing RPG settings. Like, even beyond my normal bra the brainstorming things we do. Yeah. Um, because this is a lot more, like, folks in sort of the stuff I tend to write and tend to use. Um, and I hope you guys I hope you guys found that interesting. If anybody's got questions about the setting that or the way I've, do way I've come up with some of this stuff, Please feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, I will definitely, I would love to be able to do a Q and A session on stuff like this at some point. Um, if you mm. guys have questions, so if you got questions about that or about anything you'd like us to answer in the show, uh, you can email them to us. Our email address is surlygrognards at yahoo.com, s u r l y g r o g n a r d s at yahoo.com, or you can post in the comments on YouTube, uh, or you can hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at mechagm. Uh, if you've got feedback for us, ways we can make the show better, constructive criticism, same places. We love getting that shit. And additionally, yep. if you've got show topic suggestions, oh my god, we love those. Boy, do we love those. Uh, so if you got those, send them along to us, and we will happily, happily look at them and maybe work them into a show if they're not something we've already either already done or look at it and go, yeah, we have no idea how we do a show about that. <laughs> or look at it and go, that requires way too much research for us to do. The, yeah, I mean... <laughs> There are a few topics we've gotten. We think well, that'd be kind of cool, but wow, we'd actually have to spend like a week. Each of us doing a week week's worth of re research, which is what we might want to yeah. do at some point. There's some topics we actually think I've, I know we both thought about going back to at some point to do to do exactly that. It's just that we haven't gotten. Yes, to it it's yet. just a matter of finding the time to do the research. Yep. 
But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, we both had fun doing. I think we both had a lot of fun doing this. Yes, actually. I, know. They, they, I like our brainstorm sessions, even if nothing actually comes of them. Yep, it's just fun to get those juices flowing. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think we're good. Yep, is that everything. That is everything. Uh, we record the show most Tuesday nights here on twitch.tv slash mechagm uh, and uh, yeah most Sunday night, most Tuesday evenings starting about 7pm Eastern um, round about there unless we're recording an episode of Three Men at an Anime uh, which is the yep. show Eric and I do with our friend Gav uh, but that's usually either every other week or every four weeks roughly depending on the sh- what show we're covering um, and how fast we plow through it uh, so we're probably going to be back with Grog Nerds next week again because we're about halfway through the show we're currently doing for uh, 3MA. Yeah, I think it's probably going to take two weeks for us to do that. So I'm guessing we'll be two weeks more before we can do the next episode of 3MA. So look for another episode of Shirley Grog Nerds next week where we will talk about something. We'll figure something out. Maybe we'll talk about dinosaurs. Eric likes dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs. They're delicious. We fought a dinosaur in D&D this week. Nice! It was a zombie dinosaur that came out of a tar pit. Okay. I can see that. <laughs> we thought it was a dragon because we are like, so none of us actually knows what a dinosaur is, do we? No. So it's a dragon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I remember doing, actually, when my friend Peter Shaw was running the second edition D&D campaign where he's adapting first ed mod- basic D&D modules to a second ed. Mm-hmm. We actually did uh, uh, the, oh, God, what's the name? The, uh, Frack, I've got the name of the D&D module. One of the old dinosaurs. Oh, I, I know the one you're talking about, but yeah, I don't remember the name either. The Isle of Dread. That's it. I knew it was an island. Yes. We did. Uh, we, we played through the Isle of Dread. Um, for awesome. our characters, Lordy, that was an exercise in misery. <laughs> Well, you're trucking around the rain. You're trucking around the jungles, you know, where it's raining and all stuff, all constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I was playing a dwarf. Oh, I'm was, sorry, dude. <laughs> that was hell. It's like a dwarven fighter cleric. Ugh. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week with some damn fool topic. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye.